Hello and welcome to Switchwatch, your home for everything Nintendo Switch related. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news, you might want to consider subscribing. I'm James Amero and today I am delighted to be talking to you about Disgaea 5. I've reviewed this game after spending about 25 hours. The game's available now and if you want to pick up a copy on Amazon, I'll stick a link at the bottom. If you do buy it, we do get a small commission which helps us out. If you've played a previous Disgaea game, you're going to feel right at home here. And if you haven't, you're in for a one crazy ride as I was. This game was originally released on the PS4 back in 2014. And this version includes all of the additional downloadable content. It's basically the complete version, if you will. Now I'm playing this game at a great time. I had the meaty story of Zelda, followed by a few quicker games like Mario Kart, which is great fun and relief from a deep world. Disgaea 5 then was something I was ready for. As a gamer, I absolutely love deep strategic games and I love RPGs. And this is a perfect blend of the two, if you will. This game reminds me a lot of the Final Fantasy Tactics series, but it's absolutely on steroids. If you can imagine Football Manager and what that is to FIFA games or Pro Evolution Soccer, that's what Disgaea is to the strategic RPG genre. This feels deliberate. Nipponichi Software, or NIS, have made this game world for this specific reason. They've made a game here that meets all SRPG fans' delight. There are menus upon menus. You can level everything. And I literally mean everything. It's not just your character. You can level every single item. And I'll get into more of the specific mechanics. But I think it's important to call out early. This game has a lot of depth, it's, there's a lot to it, and I absolutely love it, but it's not going to be for everyone. That's not to say you can't play this game and not get completely bogged down in the detail, but it encourages you and entices you to do so. From the top I found this game a visual treat. I love the manga style that's evident throughout this, the colours are vibrant, and it really shines whether it's on the TV or on portable mode. On that note, there's no tear, no slowdown, and almost no loading times at any point. This game is very smooth. The story sets you in an alternative universe and this universe is made up of nether worlds. Nether worlds are essentially planets ruled by an overlord. This universe is occupied by demons. We join our main protagonist Killia, Q classic moody male hero when he stumbles across Seraphina, the over bubbly and crazy overlord of one of the worlds, she believes she that all men are here to serve her. They quickly join forces and we find out that an evil emperor friend. known as Void Dark has been conquering and enslaving the population of multiple netherworlds. The story goes on along this vein and we meet many new protagonists, each with their own crazy bubbly personality and a lot of laughs along the way. This game is actually really funny. A nice touch is that a lot of this game is voice acted. When you combine that with the beautiful graphics and the hilarious cutscenes of which there are many, we're in for a visual treat. You're really along for a fun journey with this story. A story which takes you across 16 different netherworlds on a quest to go and defeat Void Dark. Along the way, you're meeting a whole bunch of different characters, strengthening and ultimately becoming a rebel army. Each netherworld is set up as a chapter with five episodes. Each episode is a battle. And this is the main place the story pans out and you'll be spending a lot of time in them. Battles take place on an isometric battlefield with a top-down view and turn-based combat ensues. You control a force of 10 characters and uniquely can set up your actions before executing them. This sounds quite simple, but what it means is you're able to move your characters freely and set up devastating combos. You're also able to play out the game by moving a number of players, attacking, then moving some others and doing further attack steps. Because of the way it's set up, I found combat felt more natural, felt more fluid. As you'd expect, there are a huge number of different classes. Although it takes it to the nth degree, there are over 40 different classes and in my time I managed to try out a whole bunch of them. Each class has a very, very different play capability, leading to really interesting battles. 
Each class has a set of weapons that they're best with and a set of skills that they can develop over time by using them. What's nice about this is that nothing's fixed. You can take an archer and turn them into a brute over time. You also get to control monster classes by capturing them and just getting them in different points throughout the story. They offer another dynamic to the game and have some really weird unique abilities. For example, a monster has magic change. Magic change turns a monster into a weapon that can be wielded by another character. You're able to pick up any character in this game. Monsters can't, however, lift them. So there's a trade-off between monsters and characters, and I find that adding a combination of the two works really well in battle. At first I thought lifting and then subsequently throwing your characters was a bit of a gimmick, but I realised it actually adds a lot to the way battles pan out. For example, you might want to chuck an archer or a mage on top of a tower so that they can defend themselves and have further range in attacking. You may also want to throw one of your colleagues further along the map so that they can start attacking the enemy. Picking up doesn't stop at one player though. You're able to stack your entire team and attack in a devastating way. The trade-off is that when stacked, only one action can be performed, meaning you can only attack one enemy at a time. There are some awesome skills in this game and some really great combos. By standing around the enemy, your players will jump at them in a group, giving you bonus damage. There's also the revenge system. Each character has a revenge bar, and as you start to take a beating, they start to get annoyed. Once your character goes into revenge mode, they do devastating critical attacks, and none of their skills take up any skill points. This encourages you to take a beating and play risky. The main characters in your story are overlords, and they have some additional powers. When in revenge mode, an overlord gets an overload ability, which they can use once per battle. These abilities are all unique and offer something different to the battle. Each netherworld has its own unique feel and look to it, as well as a unique effect. For example, the poison netherworld poisons you if you step on the wrong squares and finish a turn there. This keeps battles fresh and adds a unique challenge and tactical thought process to each different netherworld. The game introduces you to mechanics which slowly get more and more complex as time goes on, adding additional layers to it. After your first few chapters, geo panels are added to the game. Geo panels give you or your enemies a buff, ranging from attack bonuses to not letting you use any of your skills. In each battle, you have the ability to get bonuses. Bonuses range from 0 to 9 and unlock additional skills, spells or just other goodies along the way. This led me to want to get the best score I could possibly for each battle. It gives you a whole bunch of replayability. When your fight's won and done, to your own pocket netherworld. This is your base camp and this is the other place you're going to be spending a whole bunch of time. Within your pocket netherworld, it starts out as a place to heal after each battle, buy things from the shop, speak to your other characters outside of battle, pick up quests, and over time evolves and grows to be a much bigger place. There is so much to sink your teeth into here. You can recruit additional characters, send characters away who aren't in your main squad to other worlds to essentially play the game on their own, gain experience, complete other worlds and come back with goods for you. You can even call a dark assembly. This is basically a government where you can go and lobby for certain changes. This can be things like unlocking the cheat shop, which lets you set parameters in the game such as what experience to gain, how tough the enemies are and gives you a whole bunch of freedom to additional skills and all sorts of wacky things. One of the vendors here is a nice touch, it's the trophy system. Now as the Nintendo Switch doesn't support trophies but PS4 did, NIS actually went and mapped over all trophies from the original version into the Switch and added them to an NPC. As you get a bit further in you unlock the item world and then later on the character world. Item world is really cool and mind-boggling. Any item in the game can be entered into. Within them is a netherworld which you can go into a progressive dungeon. A little bit like Diablo. This is the main place for you to bulk up your characters, gain new items and strengthen your party. Around this time is when I started to realise just how deep the rabbit hole goes. This game offers you ultimate freedom. It's okay for you to cheat. It's okay for you to go and spend hours on one item. You can level up every character in the game. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, pretty normal. Now you can level up every item in the game. Every item has slots for something called innocence. Every innocent can be leveled up in the game. You can even breed innocence. Every skill could be leveled up in the game as well. And you start to see 
just how many combinations there are. This game offers you the chance to spend as many hours as you could possibly want. Every character can be leveled up to level 9999. You can then reincarnate that character to give them a slightly stronger start and level them up again. Every character can be switched to any subclass and can be leveled up within that subclass as well. There are people out there who really just want to conquer this game and it's not something that can be done quickly. Now what I think is great about it is there's a balance, as I mentioned earlier. Whilst there's so much depth to this game and there's so many different sub-menus and subclasses and different things to learn and easter eggs, you don't have to do this stuff. And whilst you will have to spend some time understanding the core mechanics, you are able to complete the game. It's not an easy game, you know, it's pretty hard, but if you don't go this deep into it, you can grind and you can level up and you can take it on. That seems like a pretty big feat to me, something that caters for the semi-hardcore to the extremely hardcore. Now you add into it the fact that you can actually play this game on the move, something that's not been able to be done before on the PS4, and you have uh, an absolutely devastating combo. Now I tested out the battery life on this game and I got over five hours on a single charge and I didn't turn off Wi-Fi or dim the screen or any Thing like that to try and save power. It's an incredible feat, they've really optimised it for the Nintendo Switch. It's an interesting fact when you consider the rumour is it wasn't capable of running on the PS Vita and that's why it came to the Switch. They've done a fantastic job. On the move this game is brilliant. You stick your headphones in, you go to battle and hours pass. The truth is, with this review I'm only really scratching the surface. There's a lot to it, there's, it's a huge game and there's so many different parts to it, so many different ways that you can spend your time. They set you up with a world that is huge and offers you a lot to do. It sounds tedious but somehow it lures you back in, you really want to get back in there, you want to progress, you want to uncover new things and that to me is a fantastic game. Overall I'd absolutely recommend picking this one up. Like I said at the beginning, it's not for everyone but if this is the kind of game for you you're going to absolutely love it. It's found a perfect home in the versatile Switch. I love it in handheld mode and it looks absolutely gorgeous on the TV. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking out the time. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to pop a comment down below. And if you like what you see, have a think about subscribing and we'd appreciate a like.